Hello. Yeah, Francis Lawrence, director. Josh Hutcherson, actor. Jennifer Lawrence, doctor. <laughs> Liam Hemsworth. Nina Jacobson, producer. Okay, question right here. Two questions, one for, well, first of all, congratulations on a great ending. And starting with Jennifer, could you talk about your last moments as Katniss? And for Josh, can you talk about how you did the great job of dual pitas? <laughs> Whoa. Um, I feel like I kind of had two um, final endings with Katniss. The one when I wrapped, when we wrapped the film in Berlin, um, and the one with when she everybody. Dies. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> um, with everybody, and you know, Woody and Josh and Liam and everyone was there, um, and that was kind of saying goodbye to the movie. And then I had a last scene about a year later um, with my nephews, which was so special. They played my children. Am I allowed to say that? Sure. Okay. Um, they played my children in the scene that and was mine. shot. So it was like this amazing um, closure to this character who I've um, loved for so many years to have my family there, my blood family instead of this family. I got to say goodbye to both. Mm. Different times. Yeah, for me, uh, it was cool. You know, th this was like the, the final episode that I was looking forward to when I read the books, you know, where PETA kind of, you know, is hijacked and becomes tortured and all these things. Um, and it was cool to take a character that has like such a special place for like the fans, you know, take that kind of character that everybody loves so much as this golden boy or whatever, and and turn him into that dark side and and kind of explore that while also having the like back and forth kind of a, a being quasi bipolar from all the uh, trauma he's experienced. Uh, Debbie, question. Congratulations, all of you. An amazing job, an amazing journey going along with all of you for the ride. But I want to I ask Francis, the tonal bandwidth emotionally and visually has been very important to this franchise from the very beginning. But we see a definitive shift in this final installment in terms of more of Katniss coming into her own and thinking for herself, for herself with a future. How did you incorporate that emotional shift into your visual dynamics? Wow, uh, it's it's funny. I don't. I didn't really think about uh, sort of a shift in visual visual dynamics in this movie um, based on her character. I mean, Katniss has always been the anchor for me. She's sort of our eyes into this world, and we're following her, and she's the anchor in every sequence and every scene. And so, for me, visually, but it's throughout all the movies. I'm sort of anchored to her. So we're usually walking into rooms with her and seeing other people talk from her you know, point of view. Uh, and the big difference tonally and emotionally really is just with her journey itself in the movie, but it, it didn't really affect my, my visual approach at all. Jennifer, could you talk a little bit, go back to that last, last scene. When you finally wrapped, could you just talk about sort of the ending of the character? Was it like accomplishment? I've, I've, I've done what I can with her? Or was it a little kind of bittersweet that I'm giving up this character now? Um, I don't know. I think the feeling of accomplishment will probably happen more when the film finally comes out. As, you know, we're not really done working on it in some ways. We still have to represent it. And um, I don't know. I, I didn't really feel like I said I said goodbye to her. It's it's funny. I mean, that's what we do on every movie is we develop these characters, and a few months later, you never see them again. Um, so I guess I'm used to that. Um, so I didn't really feel it so much character-wise at the end of Hunger Games. I think it'll be pretty bizarre when the movie's finally out and we finish this press tour and everything's officially done. I think that's going to be a pretty weird feeling just on a personal level. These movies have been my life for so many years. Um, congratulations on the film. Uh, the sewer sequence, how many days were you guys, did you get spent wet? Uh, was your costume at all waterproof? And for Mr. Lawrence, uh, what was that like uh, shooting this action scene in such a claustrophobic environment? 
Uh, it was absolutely the most miserable three weeks, uh, I think, in the three so movies. Happy you said it. Yeah. Was it, was it only movies. three weeks? It was only three weeks? No, it, I, feel like I mean, it felt, like, it felt like nine weeks, yeah, but it yeah. was oh, about yeah. three weeks. It was, it was really, tru truly miserable. Uh, it's, it's kind of a fun sequence to make, in a sense, and to sort of put together and see how it comes together. But, you know, these tunnels, you had to duck. We all had to wear hard hats. The water was heated, so it made everything Poor humid. Poor Liam to stand up straight for three weeks. Yeah, it made it, it, yeah. Made it humid, yeah. it was yeah. smoky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was wet, it was miserable, everybody was miserable. And the um, thing is, like, the costumes were not at all waterproof. No, they're not at all And they had pockets that would actually just, would like, fill with water. 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 But yeah. it was, when we get to the fight sequence, sorry, we're all just, like, complaining. Um, but, <laughs> we, had a, we had a ball, we're very lucky. But um, when we had the fight sequence in the sewer, you know, all of our gear, and our costumes were completely waterlogged. So it was like an extra 20 pounds. I don't know math, but felt like an extra 2,000, I don't know, pounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was hard. It was rough. But it's Francis a, it, is so organized. Yeah, but it, it's, it's actually interesting because it's something they, they don't really teach you in film school that when you get to a certain point and you're, you know, seven months into, you know, an 11-month shoot, and you hit a sequence like this, and the mood uh, and morale of the crew and the cast yeah. hits a rock bottom. What is what it's like psychologically to sort of push through those kinds of things, those kinds of experiences to get what you need? Uh, and you know, it was on time, it was on schedule, although it was just truly miserable. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I'm really happy with the results. So. I remember like towards the end of that <laughs> whole sequence. you forget the pain. Yeah, it was just at the end of that sequence. It was just like, oh my god, we have more shots to do. Like, like, cause that final, that final room, it felt like it was just never ending. Yeah. Whatever. Wow. I like it. Right yeah, um, for Daily News. Um, my question is for Jennifer. First, great job by everyone. Um, great film. Loved it. Um, I think your acting, Jennifer, in this film, your range shows that you're on your way to a Meryl Streepian career, and. Uh, <laughs> And um, I just want to say that your performance in this film, in this series, cements Katniss Everdeen as an iconic figure, like I, Indiana Jones and Rocky Balboa. Um, I know I have a, a friend, of, a teen friend of mine. <laughs> and her, her, mo her mom and dad both have cancer, and she still lights up when she's looking forward to the new Hunger Games movies. And she's like, well, Katniss would still smile. Katniss wouldn't give up. So you do have an impact in that way. So I guess my question just is, um, you know, th this has had such an impact. And these movies have been so successful. Um, Catching Fire, I believe, was the first female-led movie to be number one at the box office since 1969. And has helped other female m movies get made. So with that, I mean, what do you feel? Do you feel the impact, A, of this character, and B, since we always look toward the future, um, there's rumors that Marvel Studios really wants you to be their um, Captain Marvel. Would you ever want to do that, combine, you know, playing that sandbox with Bradley and Chris Pratt and all of those people? I would love to play in a sandbox with them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, first of all, thank you. That's the nicest thing I've ever heard in my life. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I I feel the impact of being a part of such a huge movie that does so much for so many people. I mean, it would be impossible not to. And I think that this character is so um, overwhelmingly supportive of. Uh, women, obviously, and um, um, and is iconic. I don't feel a, a personal um, impact. Like I, I have an, and I think that if you ever become aware of that, then it kind of takes away from it a little bit. So it's just kind of it's the movie and and the characters, and they kind of have their own life and. Um, uh, it's kind of like your avatar self. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah. uh, yes, uh, Liam. Um, Two-part question. Say, uh, do you feel a bit down or sad because you didn't get the girl at the end? And also, <laughs> and also, uh, what do you think about uh, the evolution of your character? Because now Gail, Gail has turned to somebody who's kind of cold-hearted, like thinking hey, collateral damage is in war. You know, it happens. So those are my questions. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't feel down. <laughs> 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 I 
I actually feel pretty happy. Um, no, I mean, you know, obviously I'd, I'd read the books too, so I, I always knew that that was going to happen at the end. Um, you did question it, though. I, you did yeah. that in rehearsal. I remember you going to like, I, I don't get it. I don't why it. What's so um, bad about him? <laughs> He's a good guy, apart from all the killing and stuff. So. Um... Yeah, uh, he, he gets pretty angry towards the end, you know, he's, he's been through a lot and uh, for a long time, you know, really didn't have any, uh, any power to do anything and, and, you know, through this last part he's front and centre and, and is able to really make an impact and um, I think it all kind of goes to his head a little bit and, and he loses sight of, of his own morals and, and values and uh, that's kind of why, you know, Gale, Gale and Katniss sort of part ways, I guess, you know, they, they, they have a, a strong disagreement about what's right in war, and um, that's something that, in the end, Katniss can't really let go. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, question here. Hi. You guys look great, by the way. <laughs> you know, the Hunger Games series is originally for young adults, and a lot of them look up to you as people and your characters in the movie. What do you hope that young people will take away from this film? I mean, for me, a message that's always resonated that, um, that I think is pretty strong is about standing up for what you believe in and how one person has the ability to affect something, you know, that one person can stand up and, and get behind a cause or what they believe in and, and fight for it. So I think that those are, are pretty, um, pretty strong messages I, I hope that fans take. And I think they have. I think that's why they connected with it in a way, because it empowered them and, and it, it gave them a sense of empowerment <laughs> that's what empowering that means um, so yeah so I think that for me like that that's something that I really hope people take away from it and the consequence of war obviously you know I think Katniss is a character who wants nothing more than to not have war but unfortunately I think in the last you know finale of the film she kind of realizes that's where it's headed and that's what has to be done in order to ma uh, have a revolution uh, Nina is someone who clearly you know took this from book <coughs> Well, I do think that the notion of social change and the possibility that, um, you know, defiance in the face of injustice um, and kindness in the face of cruelty, um, that I think young people, I think that the sort of popularity of, you know, dystopic fiction speaks to an anxiety that young people feel about the future that awaits them. And what I find so hopeful in these books and in these movies is the fact that uh, you can create change and that you can refuse to play the game and see your world change as a result. Um, and I think that also the, the voice of young women and their power to change um, the world and their world um, and to be um, the spokesperson for that kind of change has been something that certainly Jen has ridden, risen to the occasion of and that I hope um, young people, whether they're boys or girls, will rise to that occasion and change the world um, because we, we need to do that. Question here. Hi, congratulations. I think it's a very satisfying ending. Now in another lifetime, if they're remaking Mockingjay, what other part would you play that you may, maybe admired throughout the filmmaking? I mean, I, I've always loved Haymitch, mm -hmm. but Woody's perfect, so yeah. I don't know. Snow would be, 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 be kind of cool, too. Be hard to top Haymitch. Yeah, I mean, there, there wouldn't be a topping. He is that guy. Yeah. Apart from, he's not a drunk alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, that's not no, a no, 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 I just mean his, his loving sense of humor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably Haymitch. Yeah. Um, uh, this question is for the producer and Jennifer. Uh, I was wondering if this one is already set for release in China because last time it didn't, uh, it delayed it, and I, it, Jennifer didn't get it to go. I was wondering if this time you can go to Beijing. Uh, what do you expect there? Do you want to try some like a traditional Chinese food or some experience? Well, I mean, we were all really disappointed last time. We were yeah. excited to go, and you know we had. <coughs> Such an incredible um, experience with the fans of this franchise. I've been thinking about it a lot and talking to people about it. You know, oftentimes 
um, when something is beloved, it, it provokes haters somehow. There's like those two things have to live alongside each other, especially in the era of you know, kind of all the internet chatter. And um, we've been very lucky in that we don't have the haters. We have incredibly supportive, smart, passionate, inspired fan base, and we haven't gotten the chance to experience that in China yet. And um, it's a place I've, you know, to get to go and interact with the fans there and to get to see uh, this movie uh, have a life there that we get a chance to, to witness this time is something I think we're all really excited about. Uh, is your name? Uh, my, hello, my question is, my question is for Jennifer. Uh, the, uh, your character choose uh, stop fighting, actually, it's kind of peace came. So, and uh, she go back to uh, hometown and uh, uh, make a family. And more like a peaceful and ordinary people's lifestyle she choose, but Gail did not. So h how affects you, yourself, uh, you know, the, uh, in the future, you're kind of thinking to going back hometown, more like a peaceful life, and sometimes work to come back to the Hollywood, or you stay more like a tinsel town, um, you kind of live, stay there, and uh, uh, making family or more like uh, ordinary people lifestyle. You kind of think that way. Or um, I think there's a, the, we all have had to find a balance in feeling ordinary in our lives that are, you know, bizarre, um, and finding a home and you know where in a place where we weren't born. Um, I I don't really feel like es escaping from anything. You know, when I when I finish a movie, I still like to stay in New York or L.A. and um, I I enjoy working. I don't I don't really feel there's certain things that I, that um, I'd like to that I like to escape from um, in this business. But for the most part, I, I don't I don't really feel like like going oh. I'm like going off into the country. If I was like someplace quiet, I would I would just like lose my mind. I'm sure one day I will, and I'll want to retire and slow down. But as of now, I really I I I, I love working. I love being busy. I love reading or writing or doing anything to keep myself busy. Hi, um, <coughs> Nina. You talked about uh, social change and. Uh, young women speaking up and using their voices. And Jennifer, I know you just wrote a Lenny letter about not making as much as your male co-stars. Um, no, and I wonder if you would talk a little bit about what prompted you to write that and and why you did that. Um, I, I I would love to like straighten up that I wasn't I wasn't writing about not. I mean, yes, I did not make as much as my male co-stars. It was it wasn't so much. As a, a complaining about, you know, I wasn't getting paid more because I'm a woman. It was more of how did my mentality get in my own way of, you know, fighting just as hard as the men to get a better deal. Is that because I'm a woman? As the only point of view I have is from a woman's point of view. And um, so, uh, I, you know, it de there definitely wasn't any foul play involved, you know, on Sony's part. They're not going to give somebody more money if they don't ask for it. No foul play from the men or anybody making that movie. A lot of you know things have to be rearranged and um, exceptions have to be made when you're going to have that many movie stars in one movie. Um, I hoped to just write kind of more about how my own fears of how am I going to be portrayed or how am I going to look or how will people judge me got in my way when you know obviously the men in the movie don't don't think that way and you know even after writing it there's still you know it's been called I don't I don't remember what website it was but like called it Jennifer Lawrence's bratty display and I was like thank you for completely making my point that if a woman goes you know and speaks yeah. up and is assertive and has uh. a voice you know she's going to be called a brat or going to be called you know I, d I just don't see a man being called a brat but um, <clears throat> I think I think that when people say, "Oh well, you know, what does this role mean for young women?" You know, I think that the way that what Jen spoke about, which I found really powerful as a woman, and I completely relate to, is that you know you don't always want or feel entitled to be the spokesperson as a woman. And um, I just recently did a, a workshop that was sponsored by Women in Film and Sundance about 
you know, really getting to the 50-50 place of gender parity that we ought to be at uh, behind and in front of the camera and in the checkbook. Um, and that applies to so many women, you know, who don't have the profile and the ability to have a public forum. But um, oftentimes, you know, even coming out of Sundance, let's say, where it'll be half and half of women directors coming out of the program, and then you look to a couple years later who's working, and it's like 3% of the women who came out of the <coughs> winning category are working, and 97% of the men, um, of the people who are still working after Sundance. And so, so, obviously, a lot of that is chauvinism, but also, as girls, we don't always have the confidence to feel like we're going to, that we won't be judged if we speak up. And I think that that is really what was at the heart of that essay, and I think it's something that resonates with Katniss as a character who's sort of forced to speak up. Um, and I think it's a really important. Yes, two questions. The first one for Jennifer, was that you singing on the, uh, in the closing soundtrack, uh, the, that first song that we heard? And if so, was that as a result of the success of the single that was released from the last film? And the second question um, would be for Nina and Francis, and that is um, when um, Hamish was reading the, the goodbye letter from Philip Seymour Hoffman's character, I it got me very emotional because I realized that he was no longer with us. And I was wondering if that letter was part of the concessions that needed to be made in order to keep the plot going because he was no longer there to film his scenes. Yes, uh, Phil was supposed to be in that scene with Katniss. And so that was one of the, the, the big changes. That was one of his big scenes that he had not completed when he died. And so that was uh, our change because of that event. Um, and before she talks, I mean, uh, having Jen sing the, the lullaby at the end had nothing to do with the su success of The Hanging Tree and had in entirely to do with the idea of Katniss at the end of the movie singing the same song to her child that she sang to Prim at the, in the very first scene of the series. So it was about sort of seeing that, that connection with, with family and with child. Jennifer, I have to tell you, I don't think you're a brat at all. And I don't think most yeah. people in this room see you or view you when you express yourself. Uh, observing your career and you move through it with such style and grace. Um, but you did it. <laughs> but you do it just by being yourself. I mean, and, and that shocks the crap out of most people that hear you speak publicly. So I was wondering if you might describe the trajectory or the ride the last five years have been the best parts and the not so much? I mean, it's a hard thing to sum up. Um, really, honestly, it's, it's, it's a, a job. I, I, I really love acting. I really do. I, um, so I really just... I really just think of myself as just like a working woman, and I and I just go from set to set and work. And then you know you have to promote a movie, you have to work. People are going to have opinions and talk. You know, it's 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 weirdly very easy to kind of block out the world because you have your own. So I, I guess if the five years with ups and downs, you know, there's there's there was a few years of getting used to it. Your your entire world changes in, in as far as like now it's very easy for me because I'm isolated <laughs> I am um, I, I have a new normal now and so I feel very stable and normal and happy and um, but it took a few years to to uh, get used to being looked at differently is kind of a very alienating feeling because you don't feel different and everybody reacts to you differently um, uh, but the the pressure, uh, you just can't think about it. Or it'll just it'll just just keep you up. Um, so I don't know. I guess it was just a few years of getting used to it, and then I got used to it, and then I was like, okay, let's get back to work. And then people react and can do whatever they want, but that's fine. That's on them. I'm just I just have a job. And that's how I think of it. I'm I'm sorry if I'm not answering anybody's questions. I think you've answered every question. Really? Yes, you Thank you. Yeah. You're not listening. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lie. You've been zoning out this whole Completely. time. Completely. <laughs> All I can think about is a squeaky tape recorder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what that is. That's what it is, yes. <clears throat> uh, hey, Jen. Uh, Jennifer. Sorry. Can hey. I call you Jen? <laughs> um, 
actually for all you guys, how do you, uh, how looking back, and, and you said that this movie has been your life for years and years now. Looking back, how do you three think that you've changed or grown professionally or personally over these past several years? I mean, it's hard to say. It's probably still too soon to be able to look back and, and, and reflect. Um, I hope I've grown up. I, I mean, it's much easier to be mature on sets without Josh and Liam. I'm <laughs> sure I'm unrecognizable <laughs> to people I'm working with. Um, I don't know, getting it, we, we all helped each other get a handle on everything. Um, so I guess kind of going off and not doing movies with them was kind of like losing training wheels. And then it's like, okay, <laughs> okay, I can, I'm riding in the street. Okay, I can do it. I don't know, for me, it's like always a hard question. Like anytime anybody asks, like, what have you learned? <laughs> I don't know if I just don't learn anything ever. <laughs> or I don't know, because I, I feel like I'm constantly learning things just in life and experience with working with various actors and directors and everything. That's the one. It, this one's got to go. Who's oh. this? Please, turn it off, please. <laughs> 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 um, because it's like, I, I don't really... I don't remember like oh god today I learned this like I don't I don't reflect upon it. I kind of just grow and as a person and and like I mean for us it was it was like I mean for me really it was like a college experience in many ways um, but you know it Except was for the uh, education yeah exactly so I didn't learn anything at all um, so no I mean I I know I've learned many things and I've grown a lot as an actor as a person and everything but to really say like something specific I don't know yeah I think sort of getting used to like your world constantly changing. That's, yeah. you know, going from one extreme to the other is something <coughs> that over the past six years is, is, I think it gets easier. You know, I think at first, as a young person, doing something like this and, and going from one extreme situation to another is really overwhelming. And I yeah. think over, over years, you learn to sort of, I think, let it go and, and, and it not be so attached to having a routine yeah. or, you know, feeling safe at all. I think you just have to let go of that. <laughs> you got to just let go of that. You're yeah, not going to get just that. Just accepting that you're, you know, you got to just go with Rolling it. Well, yeah, because our jobs are so it's so full on. I always say, like, if you're working, it's, you know, 13 to 16 hour days every single day in a strange city where you don't know anybody, you don't know your surroundings, you don't know anyone. Yeah. And then you rap and you've got time off, which is great, but then you just go to nothing. And it's, Become an alcoholic. It's, it's hard because yeah. it's hard to find. <laughs> Not me. I'm just talking about friends. I He's know. just speaking objectively. <laughs> I have this friend. Um, but yeah, it's hard to find a balance because you're, you go from being overworked to being like, oh my god, I need time off. I'm so exhausted, my body. And then you get time off, and your mind is going crazy because I hate waking up without a, a goal and going to sleep without achieving nothing. So it's. So I, you know, just started. I don't mind that so much, I have to say. So, <laughs> so now I just obsessively yeah. work. <laughs> On weekends, I meet with directors and pitch myself. Or Rich. write things uh, yeah, that nobody will ever see. It's for Francis, but I want all three of the actors to respond as well. When you first started with the first installment of this franchise, I'm pretty sure you had second, a... Second, second. Oh, okay, okay, the second one, sorry. I'm pretty sure you had a direction in mind and you had some kind of control over that direction. However, with the success and all the craziness that goes with that, was it hard to maintain that original direction? And as far as the actors, the same thing here. Did the studios pressure you to do the characters any different now that it's successful and they know it's making money? Or did they just let you guys just continue the mission that you started with. No, I, I think I think the you know my objectives. Um, you know, I was able to to see them through. It. I, I came in and I met with Nina for the first time, and uh, I was hired about a week later. And I had a very clear idea of the way that I wanted to tell the story. And uh, luckily, Nina really agreed, and the studio really agreed, and everybody kind of kept their word. And when I was hired, I then went and kind of pitched my approach to all the actors that were already part of it. Um, and everybody was kind of on board, which was an amazing thing. There were there were no fights, and and it never changed throughout. I think everybody everybody was on the same. Uh, they were all we were all in the same car. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. I mean, I I don't think that the success at all impacts your depiction of the character I mean you know it's all in the books you know like the characters are there and and you're gonna play them how you see them 
And um, and so I don't, I don't think the success at all. There was no pressure from the studio like you need to be funnier now that we were making money. Yeah. There was I no, mean, things <laughs> change really happen, and develop. We sure. had to grow yeah, yeah, with our characters. Our characters were growing, so <coughs> you know, certain things would we would change with them. But Lionsgate is an incredibly supportive studio, and also Francis came in with a brilliant idea and does a brilliant job. And so I don't even think. There was, it's not really anything to say. He's, to Francis is also um, an amazing director. He's, he's yeah. fantastic. There's no one better to work with than Francis. He's just, he's awesome. I agree. No. Here, here. Wow. Right here. Thank you, Lena. Uh, my I said it too. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. <laughs> uh, my question is for Francis. The story gets <coughs> so chaotic at times and so crazy, and it feels very wartime-esque throughout the movie, but that sewer scene could have been too much at times, but it was so controlled. Uh, especially leading up to the conclusion with Finnick, what was your direction in order to make sure that you made the audience feel terrified, but also made sure that they understood what was happening still? Uh, well, there's a couple things. I think that you know I, I always try to apply a specific emotional value to a sequence, and so obviously this was an opportunity to be really terrifying, uh, which was that part of it was really fun. I mean, the, the actual physical process of making it sucked, but that was fun. Um, and so the sort of design uh, of the and sus uh, of the sort of suspenseful first act of that sequence uh, was where I thought the, the real scares were. But in, in terms of making sure that we understood what was going on, I worked really closely with the stunt uh, stunt team, the stunt choreographer, coordinator, uh, in designing the fight and figuring out how to cover the fight where we could hold for long periods of time so that we could maintain a sense of geography. Um, so we sort of knew where all the actors were, the characters were at any given time, and understood what was happening and what they were doing and who was in peril and what they were feeling. And so we let things play out. It made it really complicated and it made it much more difficult, which is why it took so long, because we didn't have the room anymore to sort of hide things in, in messy and sloppy camera work. Um, but I think it, it was really useful in the sequence. Uh, question in the front. Haran Mamo, Daily Trojan for USC. First of all, great film, loved it, cried about four times. Um, my question is for Jennifer. Uh, in the movie, Katniss Everdeen has become this household name that symbolizes courage and strength in the midst of the rebellion. To viewers today, in present time, what do you think Katniss Everdeen symbolizes? Hopefully the, hopefully the same ideals. Um, you know, audiences are growing up with this character. Um, so, I don't know, I hope that they're, everybody's going to take away something different with each film, and as they as they get older, I'm so bad at answering questions. But um, I have a really, I really know what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I hope that they take away the same thing um, as as they always have. But also, our audience will grow and and you know learn more, or see more of themselves, or see more of what they want from from this world or this country. I'm really going to do it all day. Uh, this question is for Jennifer. Um, just regarding franchise, franchise films, we <laughs> often see how actors struggle afterwards um, to see success in their professional, um, in their professional field. So uh, I'm just wondering. <laughs> see, now, now I'm struggling I'm just like you. <laughs> so I'm just wondering. We haven't seen that with you because you just keep filming and filming and, other, and their success is just blooming. So just why do you think that is? <laughs> My question is just, what, why do you think that is? Um, well, I've been, I'm, I'm incredibly it's a damn good fortunate. actress. Uh, thank you, honey. <laughs> I've been really fortunate. Um, you know, when I, when I, I, I shot the first Hunger Games movie, and then I, um, I auditioned for David O. Russell for Silver Linings about two weeks after I wrapped. So he had no idea, you know, what was about to happen. <laughs> um, so I, I remember, you know, there have been a few times where I've, I would have really loved time off, but I was very aware of how overwhelming these movies and this character was, and that was a big fear of mine signing on to the movie, is um, I don't want, I, I want every, people to be able to lose themselves when they're, when they're watching a movie, not see, uh, see you know, kind of uh, the same character. This character, however, is remarkable, and in my opinion, the greatest I think she's the greatest female character ever. 
Um, so I wasn't, you know, too mad at that. But I just tried to just, I, I just tried to keep working so that people could see other characters, um, other things that I could do instead of taking vacation time. And now I'm aging like a president. But it's worth it. Great. Thank you so much. I'm sorry we're out of time. I'm going to ask everyone to stay seated. Um, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys. <coughs> Daily Mail.